Welcome back. Coming up in the next segment, we're going to be talking about Tombstone. Oh, no, no, not talking about COVID-19 tombstones. I'm talking about the tombstone, the Wyatt Earp Brothers, Doc Holliday, and the Vendetta Ride from Hell. We'll be talking to author Tom Clavin. It's going to be a nice break from uh, uh, what, what, <laughs> 2020, where we're living right now. So I'll be coming up in the next segment. Uh, before we get to that, just consider the fact that we got the Treasury Department borrowing $3 trillion in April, May, and June. $3 trillion. Do you remember the halcyon days of old? <laughs> we don't have to go all the way back to Tombstone. We can just go back to, I don't know, last year when people were freaking out about the fact that, hey, look at this. Uh, <laughs> we're adding a trillion dollars to the cumulative uh, debt. You know, our deficit this year is going to be a trillion dollars. Now we're doing that on a monthly basis. This is going to be six times, six times what they borrowed in all of 2019. Uh, it's kind of insane. And even as this bubble is uh, uh, bursting, uh, I, again, when, we, when you look at how this is all accelerating very, very rapidly, last fall I was talking about how they were dumping massive amounts, trillions of dollars, into this obscure market that I'd never heard of. I, I still don't really understand it. Uh, we'll probably go back and do a postmortem to find out what destroyed the world's economy and our currency and everything at some point in time, just like we did about the securitized loans and uh, all of that rigging that happened in uh, 2007, 2008. But, you know, the repo market, uh, they started dumping in stuff there. I said, look at this. It just dumped in like $90, $100 billion. That's about the size of the, the annual gross domestic product of Puerto Rico. And then in a couple of weeks, they dumped in $500 billion. And I said, wait a minute. That's about the size of the Swiss GDP on an annual basis. And that's the 20, 20th largest uh, economy in the world. And they just dumped this in in a single day into this obscure market. What's going on? Well, you know, now we've got a trillion dollars a day being dumped in. And it's not going to mom and pop businesses. It's not going to individuals. It's going to the people on Wall Street. Let's understand where this is happening here. Here's an example of this. I talked about this briefly yesterday. Uh, Ferrari touting strong order books. They expect to outperform the second half of 2020, uh, the previous year, despite everything else in the auto industry imploding. As I pointed out, you know, Henry Ford, he wanted to make sure that his cars could be afforded by his workers. Came up with mass production, the rising middle class. Now we have the dying middle class. And so Ferrari's stock market, uh, uh, market cap, you know, the, the price of the shares times the outstanding number of shares is higher than Ford's. And GMs, as a matter of fact. And as they point out on Zero Hedge, well, maybe there's one silver lining to the global central banks widening the wealth gap. It's that the super rich still have plenty of cash in order to buy exotic vehicles. The maker of the $1.74 million Monza supercar said this week that its order book is strong, regardless of a seven-week shutdown at its Italian plants. Deliveries in the first quarter are actually up 5% from the year prior. The company says it could see faster revenue and profit growth than expected with the recovery as a tailwind. And so they expect to uh, be asking their employees to work on Saturdays and to shorten up their summer holidays in order to catch up with a big backlog of hypercars that cost $1 to $2 million. While... Nobody's making SUVs because they've put all the small and medium-sized businesses and the people who work for them out of business, right? U.S. equity investors have now made over $100 million for every COVID victim. Let me repeat that. For every COVID victim we've had here, the people who have been playing the stock market and the volatility in the stock market have made $100 million for every COVID victim. Nothing to see here, right? Just move along. Unemployment kills. The longer the lockdowns last, the worse it will get. The worse it will get. Uh, Fed Chairman uh, Jerome Powell on Wednesday uh, announced that the economic data is now coming out, and it's worse than any data that we have seen for the economy. That was last Wednesday, uh, reported from the Mises Institute. 20 years of stimulus-driven economic growth based on blowing up and sustaining bubbles through easy money. But it is now made much worse by the fact that many governments have frozen their states and their nation's economies, shut down businesses, prevented markets. See, that's the other part of this. You know, as I said before, they used to always freak out about homeschooling, saying, well, you're not socializing your kids. 
Now, they don't want your kids to be socialized. They want them to be locked up and isolated, and they want them to go to school online and get uh, Bill Gates' curriculum. Uh, he's pushing that really hard. The guy, the guy who championed Common Core. Uh, and so now uh, socialization is out, and they talk about social bubbles being evil. But financial bubbles, those are good, and we need bigger financial bubbles, right? Social bubble, bad. Financial bubble, good. Socialization now, bad. <laughs> Even though, and we want all of you to go into homeschooling, we're going to force you to go into homeschooling. But we've got the curriculum for you in homeschooling. I mean, it, you got you to gotta understand, as Franklin Graham summarized it, it's about control. That's what it's about. That and that only. And as I pointed out earlier, this I think it was Monday, I did a Where is the Beef? Showed you Clara Peller back in the 1980s, that famous commercial. Where's the beef? Well, that was a Wendy's commercial. They're making fun of the fact that McDonald's hamburgers were shrinking. Well, now McDonald's meat supply is shrinking, and so is Wendy's. A fifth of Wendy's restaurants said they're going to be out of beef as the shortage spreads. Think about that. Think about that. And, and that is really kind of surprising, too, because shutting down restaurants, I, this really hasn't. Uh, you know, the, the, the fast food restaurants, in most places, uh, even if they've shut down the restaurants, they can remain open, and they've got drive throughs that go around and so forth. And um, it's surprising to see that they cannot keep up, uh, that they cannot uh, get meat delivered, because I would think, maybe it's not true, I don't really know how their supply lines are set up, but I would think that Wendy's and Chick-fil-A and Arby's and McDonald's, that they've got their own supply chain of people who supply them with food. You know, that's been the big part of the problem for a lot of these farmers and dairymen, that the, uh, uh, the, the middlemen who take their stuff or the corporations that they sell to directly, that, that sell to uh, restaurants, uh, they shut down and they didn't have anybody to buy their stuff and they weren't set up to market it to grocery stores. Uh, they were set up to sell it into the restaurant market and so they didn't have anything to do. But here are restaurants who are not shut down and you would think that they would still be able to keep their supplies open, but that is not happening. At the same time, we see the supplies drying up on the grocery store shelves as well. Tyson said they expect to keep slowing meat production. And again, you haven't seen nothing yet, right? Because even though you've seen a 10 to 15% uh, decrease in meat supply, at the packaging houses, it was already down 40%, and they're saying they're going to slow it down even more because you can't have anybody working if anybody tests positive for the coronavirus. It doesn't matter if they're sick. Uh, they can't work. you got to shut down the entire factory if you find people who are sick in your factory. These are the rules being put out by Fauci. Remember, he said we've got to lock down the country until there's no more coronavirus cases. And so they're going to lock down the meat supply until there's no more coronaviruses. And we're going to starve. We've got rotting food. We've got hungry masses. We've got chaotic supply chain. Uh, this is <laughs> Yahoo News uh, describing this. That's why people are going to local farms and dairies, as I pointed out yesterday, local war uh, stuff. And, and the other part of this is you've got the big meat packing plants. Consolidation in big business is a big part of this problem. Long ago, uh, a lot of the independent meat packers were shut down. I, and we've talked about this briefly in the past, about how all the meat production was being consolidated in just a few suppliers. And now those few suppliers, like Tyson, are shutting down. Is this because they need to? Or is this part of the squeeze play on the middle class? It's hard to tell anymore uh, the difference between malevolence and incompetence, isn't it? Uh, it's moving very fast, and I think there's a heaping helping of both of those. Even though you may not have any meat, there's a heaping helping of both of those things on your plate. We're going to be right back, and we're going to talk about Tombstone and the Earp Brothers with Tom Flavin. Stay with us. I'm always excited about InfoWars Life products. They're amazing. They're cutting edge. You love them. I love them. And they fund the InfoWar in the face of the globalist onslaught. But we have come up with a new product over a year in development that is amazing. The only organic hand sanitizer on the market with organic essential oils on top of it. And there's another innovation. It's the spray cap. It doesn't just pour out a bunch of thick, gross, 
goo, but it's high quality and aerosolizes it in a really great way. I like to put it on my hands, rub a little bit on my face. It's got organic alcohol in it, so it'll spray it right in your eyes. But I just love it personally as something that's a moisturizer as well. So this is a real innovation. I don't know why others didn't think of coming out with a hand sanitizer that actually has essential oil in it so it doesn't dry you out, smells great. It's so refreshing. This is a big winner.